Hey everyone, and welcome back to Crypto Explained. Greetings from Bucharest, Romania, of all places. So we've restarted the What Is series, and in my last video I was talking about Polkadot. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of trouble with the audio in that video. It was just in a very echoey part of the apartment, so I've moved over to a new location. I'm hoping it's just a little bit better as far as the echo goes. So today we're gonna be talking about Solana. Solana obviously had just a massive year of 2021, and I think it was one of the biggest surprises just because of how quickly it happened. So Solana was launched in late 2020, and then March, April 2020, it already had its first major price pump. And I'll never forget it because the very first Solana video I made, I got a comment that said, it would be nice to know about these projects before the big pump has already happened. So this person was saying, look, you're telling us about it now when we already missed the boat. It's not gonna go up much further. It can't sustain this price move. Well, that was when Solana and the Soul Coin was right around 33 to $36. As we know, it went way higher than that. It's still higher than that even after the major drawdown. But it eventually got up all the way to $260 dollars per soul. So this was hands down one of the biggest moves as far as the major altcoins go. So a lot of attention is still on Solana even with the major drawdown across crypto. Why is that? Well, I think that a lot of people see potential in this project as an Ethereum killer. So Ethereum killer, we hear that phrase all the time, and I say in these videos a lot that I just think that's thrown around way too loosely. People say that about Avalanche, people say that about Cosmos, people say that about Cardano. There's just too many projects that are called Ethereum killers because Ethereum's still there. I mean, if we have an Ethereum killer, it hasn't worked yet. Uh, but if I did have to pick one out of a hat today, if, if you asked me which one has the potential to be an Ethereum killer, I would probably say Solana, just because I feel like they're trying to accomplish a very similar thing where you have this decentralized ecosystem where DeFi can just flourish in so many ways. The difference is that Solana identified two of Ethereum's biggest struggles, which kind of go hand in hand with each other. So when there's a lot of activity on the Ethereum blockchain, and keep in mind this includes ETH tokens as well, it's not just ETH, just anything housed on the Ethereum blockchain, when there's a lot of activity, a lot of transactions, this network can get really bogged down. And when the network gets bogged down, what happens is that the transaction fees just skyrocket, what's known as ETH gas fees. These gas fees just get so astronomically high sometimes that you have situations where, I mean, when are people looking to make transactions? It's either when the price is going up a lot or when the price is going down a lot. That's usually when people are most active. Well, if you have this huge transaction fee because the network is so busy, it might not even be worth that transaction or that trade that you're trying to make. It might not even be worth it if the gas fee is too high. So that's why it's really important that Solana is going after this. It's definitely a more efficient network. The only difference, of course, is that Ethereum is more proven and it's not like Ethereum can't fix these problems in some way. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things where we look at Bitcoin and the structure of the Bitcoin network that's so rigid. A lot of these other altcoin projects can be adjusted in a lot more meaningful ways. So there's no reason that, like, obviously Ethereum 2.0 is out now. There's no reason that Ethereum can't fix these problems itself, which in some ways might make Solana useless. But right now, Solana is definitely a threat to Ethereum just because people are realizing, oh, as it stands right now, we were just talking about transaction fees and how the network operates, Solana is in a lot of ways more efficient. So how did they do this? Well, there is actually a different consensus protocol for Solana than there is for Ethereum. So Solana is still a proof of stake protocol, but it's actually a hybrid protocol. And the main part of this hybrid is called proof of history. This is actually a new creation when it comes to Solana. Ethereum does not operate a proof of history consensus protocol whatsoever. So what's the difference between proof of history and proof of stake consensus protocols? Well, they're actually very similar in a lot of ways. It's just the mechanics and the dynamics behind how they actually operate. So if you think about it as a jigsaw puzzle, I think that's the best analogy that I've heard. So proof of stake, obviously you have stakeholders on the network that become validators for transactions. So essentially these validators are putting together a puzzle to settle these transactions. Well, when it comes to proof of history, it gets a little bit easier because if you imagine a jigsaw puzzle where there's numbers, where everything is labeled and you kind of know the order that things have to be put in place. So that is how proof of history operates and it just kind of streamlines the entire process and makes the transaction speeds faster. So in that way, Solana is kind of revolutionary. So here's the thing, can proof of history actually handle all of the transactions that let's say the Ethereum blockchain has? Because obviously the Ethereum blockchain has a lot more going on than the Solana blockchain at this point. So if Solana gets to that point, are they still gonna be able to operate this hybrid consensus protocol? Because proof of stake in that hybrid is kind of just meant to guide proof of history to make sure that everything's going smoothly. But what if it gets overwhelmed at some point? That is something that is possible. But right now, everything's going very smoothly and people are definitely interested 
in Solana. And we haven't even talked about NFTs yet. NFTs was one of the biggest reasons that Solana really took off in 2021. The Degenerate Ape NFT collection, which was housed on the Solana network, I have trouble saying that without laughing, the Degenerate Ape NFT collection. But you know, I'm laughing. The people that got into Degenerate Apes early have made a killing. That has been one of the most valuable NFT collections out there. So, you know, who's really laughing at the end? It just sounds hilarious though, doesn't it? So that was housed on the Solana network and that is something where, you know, NFTs, if they're still the collectible thing that people are so excited about, I don't know how long that lasts. I, I just think that that's kind of a craze right now. But I've also talked about how NFTs can be used for so much more. The actual technology behind NFTs is actually really intriguing as far as the opportunities that that could create for innovation. So I really think that, you know, Solana, when people think about Solana, they kind of think about NFTs. There's a little bit of word association there. That's definitely helping out Solana too. So there's just a lot of exciting things happening. Of course, Shopify, the online shopping service, recently added Solana pay to their ecosystem. There's a lot happening with Solana right now. And I do think obviously, you know, if Bitcoin goes up, Solana is going to go up. There's just kind of this core um, altcoin group where if you see a big pump for Bitcoin, it's very unlikely that it's just going to leave all these altcoins behind. Bitcoin dominance has been down for the most part. And I don't see a recovery in Bitcoin dominance until we kind of figure out which way this market is going to go, which direction. Because I still said in the last video, this could go both ways. We could still see lower prices across crypto. We could see it absolutely take off from here. We've had bull runs in high High interest rate environments. I mean, that's not something new. So I don't think that just completely kills off crypto for the rest of 2022 as far as the Fed's plans to, to raise interest rates. We'll see how all of that goes. But again, if Bitcoin goes up and if Bitcoin has success for the rest of the year, Solana is going to follow suit. And I really do think with how much Solana has drawn down, there could be some really interesting entry points. That's just kind of how I'm looking at this across the board. We were talking about that with Polkadot too. We have so many altcoins that are down 60, 70, even over 70%. When that happens, that can sometimes be the best time to get in. Again, not financial advice, I'm just providing some ideas that I have about where the market is right now and where I could see it going. So in the short term, I have no idea where Solana's gonna go. It definitely could go lower, and if it does, I'm gonna be even more intrigued to get into it. There's no doubt that when we have a longer term perspective, Solana has so much promise. The only thing about Solana that I will say, because it's important to talk about both sides, it of course has a lot of potential, but the one downfall I could see is that if there is a network that comes out that is just more efficient than Solana in every way, it could just take out Solana in the same way that Solana is trying to take out Ethereum. So when that happens, you know, it's, it's the Netflix versus Blockbuster effect. As soon as there is someone in the market that does a better job at the exact same thing, then the old one's pretty much useless. So that's the only thing I worry about with Solana compared to something like Polkadot, which is trying to become uh, a place where all blockchains come together, new and old, to be interoperable and have more functionality. So we'll see how the rest of 2022 goes for Solana, but there is definitely a lot of potential here and I will be talking a lot more about it. Thanks for watching the video. As always, if you have any follow-up questions on Solana and any of the recent developments or you know how it works, any details like that, put it in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon.